Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, according to Warner Bros. in a earnings call, which I'm glad these are pretty much public at this point so we could actually read these things and hear them, has been described as a failure. I mean, it's essentially been said that it has fallen short of the expectations of Warner Bros. Discovery. They went on to actually say that this year, Suicide Squad, one of our key video game releases in 2024, has fallen short of our expectations since its release earlier in the quarter, setting our games business up for a tough year-over-year -year comp in Q1. And this is not good for Warner Bros. This is not good for WB. Players have largely rejected this game. Now, if I hear someone say, but me and my friend didn't, that's awesome. There's plenty of things that I like that are not popular, and that's, that's cool. But when it comes to a big budget game like this, especially one that takes years to make, if it doesn't catch on, if it is not widely accepted, you know, a triple A high budget video game like this, especially one that relies on games as a service elements. It's a live service where the whole point is to keep people playing. If you can't even get people on board at the beginning, that is a failure. Players have largely rejected this game and it's not a good sign for the future of DC games in general. And I have a hard time believing that WB will take away the right lesson from it. They usually seem to take away the lesson, these big companies of like, oh, well, this is because players don't like these characters, or, well, this is because players want everything to be like that Fortnite. It's like they don't really understand why people reject their product. They don't understand why people aren't interested. It's unfortunate, no matter how much we scream to the heavens about it, uh, no one wants to listen, no one cares. So they just kind of make up their own reason for it and move on. Before we hop further into this, if you do enjoy today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Not a lot of people have been seeing some of my uploads lately. I've been trying to do more variety stuff again, which I would appreciate if you checked out. I did a video about the Hulk the other day, you know, the big green guy that Marvel's kind of relegated to a background comic relief character. Made a video about that, made a video taking a look at the Tomb Raider Remastered Trilogy, a game that is actually worth your money to buy at launch. So there's a lot of stuff I've been doing, a lot more I'm going to be doing. I hope you will check that out. And if you want to support the channel, memberships, Patreon, all that stuff, and of course, a Fortnite code, DJAY123. We'll talk more about some of that at the end of the video. But this is just kind of a mess because it's not just the fact that they straight up said that this game has fallen short of their expectations, which by the way, Falling short of our expectations is a way to say total failure. That is, that's a very nice business way to say like, oh, we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, because they wouldn't say, hey, this has fallen short of our expectations and that's it. You know, like they, they wouldn't stop it there. Usually there's some positive spin. Like it's, you know, kind of like it's a slow to be adopted, like a slow adoption rate. But we think that, you know, following content will bring in player, blah, blah, blah. That's the kind of stuff we see from EA, Ubisoft, all these games, huge companies, you know, now. They didn't even give that, really. It was pretty much just like, this is a letdown. It's been pointed out time after time by other YouTubers. I know I haven't personally talked about this very much, so I think it's worth me mentioning to my audience in case you haven't seen. But as of right now, the all-time peak for this game, I believe, was launch week, and it was less than 13,500 players. If you want to compare that to some other games, Helldivers 2, which this has been being compared to as a shooter with live service elements, had 458,000 people on as of the uh, the peak, which is insane. So that was 458,000 people compared to less than 13,500. Marvel's Avengers, at least the definitive edition, had 28,145 people online at its all-time peak. So that's usually the launch week, and that is basically double, actually almost more than double, what Suicide Squad had at launch week. And Marvel's Avengers, remember, was deemed as a total failure, uh, basically on the business end of things. And as of when I recorded this, the 24 hour peak of the last 24 hours, you know, it seems like I peaked in high school, by the way, according to my brain power here, was less than a thousand. It was 894 people as of the, the peak in the last one day, which is just bad. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people have pointed out, oh, look, you know, it's not just PC. Like, what are you guys talking about? People play this on console. People are playing PS5, Xbox, of course. Why aren't you taking those numbers into account? Well, here's the thing. On PC, there are tools to track players that are online. And those tools like Steam Charts, they definitely work on a game like this. You know why? Because you need to be online to play Suicide Squad, kill the Justice League. You have to be. 
The problem with the consoles is that even though you do need to be online to play this game, they hide, you know, numbers like this. They don't really want you knowing these things. Now, you're going to get your stragglers to pick up the game over time, absolutely, but this is a games-as-a-service game. They did not even have a buy-in at launch. They did not even have a big community or a big player base at launch that was interested in playing the game. Now, here's the thing. I have tried to be very glass half full with a lot of stuff in my life. You know, like I'm the kind of guy where it's like, yeah, I'm in prison, but at least the meatloaf is good. And if Jerry won't stop touching me, well, at least he's a good kisser. You know, I mean, like when you look at this game, yes, there's a lot of bad. There's a lot of things that are just frustrating and downright stupid, in my opinion. And I have been playing through the game over on my Let's Play channel, Degenerate Plays, in the description down below. So if you think I haven't been giving it a chance, I have. I've been giving it a very documented public chance playing through the game. But they keep making mistakes around this. First off, I don't think most people actually wanted this game. Now, the supposedly planned that never got past the early development stages version of a Suicide Squad game from WB Montreal, which had, you know, concept art and other stuff actually leaked and put online a while back where, you know, it was going to follow up Arkham Origins and stuff like that. I think some people were interested in that. It wasn't going to be a big live service game, as far as I know. It was just going to be a game where you play as the Suicide Squad in the Arkham universe, kind of like an Arkham game with the Suicide Squad. Games like that people were interested in, but you know what I keep seeing that is an unfair criticism? Is that, well, you guys just wanted another Batman game. You're just boring Batman fans. All you want is Batman. You just want Batman 24-7. Look, I don't think most of us feel that way. I truly don't. Like, yeah, Batman Arkham is awesome. You want to bring back a game with Roger Craig Smith and Troy Baker? Cool. I have been in support of that since day one. But here's the thing. A lot of us did want this, you know, universe to be expanded to more characters if it was going to be done properly. You know, like, hey, Superman's been teased to be out there. Make a Superman game and make it fun. Hey, you know, we know the Flash is out there. Make a Flash game. Make it fun. Set it in that world. Awesome. You know, people are open to these ideas. People are open to these fun things. But what I don't think people wanted was a Suicide Squad shooter that is always online that later on will get an offline patch but still hasn't that multiple patches have made the game even worse, where some players have had a hard time connecting multiple times since launch, other players have reportedly just had issues every single time they try and play the game. People, like, they're trying to play the game, and instead of Rocksteady actually fixing the bugs in the game, fixing the connection issues and things like that, instead their priority is to patch the infinite XP glitches so that you can't use Gizmo's cars to get too much XP because that would relegate the end game pointless and then you won't come back and buy cosmetics in the future. That's their priority. That. You know, a game that overall, despite having really great facial animations, that's something I talked about before, despite having a fun-ish gameplay loop and a cool world in Metropolis, is really designed as a shock factor game. I mean, it's designed to get you to play to feel like you're murdering your childhood superheroes, and then to give you a big fake out in the future and say, no, 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 it wasn't bad writing, guys. What we did was they were all clones, or, well, these ones are clones and these ones weren't, but we can use technology or this or that to revive them. I mean, there's a lot of leaks online that I can't get completely into, uh, which you can go and look up yourself, I suppose, which just keep po getting posted to Twitter and other places where there's like post-game content for future seasons, audio lines, things like that, that people keep releasing that seem to hint that the Justice League is coming back. Same with Batman Arkham videos pointing out the whole thing with Batman about the he will return message. Now, I completely agree that there have been some unfair and ridiculous criticisms around this. Here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't get. Just my take. When you want to criticize something, I think you want your criticisms to be on point. Like, for example, with Batman, there have been a lot of people who have basically taken the stance that just because Batman dies, game bad. No, that's not how you argue your point, and it makes us all look like clowns. The reason that the game's writing is bad is because of how things happen in the game. It's because of how the writing is. It's because of what they're saying in the dialogue and how they're saying it, not just the events that are taking place. That's the problem with, I think, a lot of the complaints around this game, is there's been a lot of very loud people who don't know how to articulate their points when complaining about the game, and I think that that's kind of made it look like a lot of people just think, not Batman game, game bad. Nobody's really thinking that, for the most part. What people are trying to say is like, hey, the writing quality here 
falls way short of what you usually do. Hey, this gameplay style, this isn't really what I want from you guys. Yeah, maybe I play Fortnite sometimes, but I don't want Fortnite light from you with a bunch of characters. I want you to do what you're good at. And I don't think that most of us want them to just go back to Batman Arkham and only do Batman Arkham. A lot of us want things like Superman, Justice League, Flash, you know, the Wonder Woman game. I see a lot of excitement for that coming up. I don't think most people are just so boring that their whole point is only Batman games are good. I refuse to ever play anything else in my existence. All hail Lord Batman. That's not really the point. It's just not. But the things that they're doing to bring people in to play this game are just pathetically bad. And yes, I understand, and I've tried to point out, that even though I don't like the writing of this game, blaming the voice actors, blaming all these people, you know, like saying like, oh, well, they were tricked into joining it. Like I've seen people say about Kevin Conroy, like he was obviously tricked into doing it. I've even seen like such mean spirited comments that like it has taken my entire being to not like dive in and just rip someone apart where they're saying like, well, clearly he was mentally compromised because of his treatments and stuff. I've seen so many people trying to diminish Kevin Conroy to be like, oh, well, clearly he wasn't in his right mind for doing the game. No, look, here's the thing. The voice actors probably saw a script that was the entire thing. They probably saw a script that is seasons out. You know why? A lot of these voice lines are recorded years before the game is out. Genuinely, like two or three years before a game launches. And, you know, they'll bring you back in if they need to change stuff. Why do you think that there's whole seasons of voice lines, like all these things that are being data mined from playable characters or returning characters that are being leaked online? They're not recorded yesterday. They were recorded before the game even launched. So I don't want to hear that. I think that is really pathetic as a criticism of the game that, oh, well, the the people who, you know, the, the voice actors, especially ones who are no longer around to defend themselves, I'm going to take the stance that they were mentally compromised or that they, you know, just don't care about the characters or don't care about us. They probably saw a version of the game that was on paper a lot more interesting. You know when M. Night Shyamalan makes a movie and there's a big twist and sometimes the twist is absolutely brain rot, like just it's stupid and you're like, wow, this was a waste of my time. But other times it's like, oh, this was really fun. This really added to the movie. I really think that a lot of the way that this game worked was they recorded all the voice lines for pretty much all the seasons ahead of time and they saw that whole script. I don't think that what they were really doing was looking at the portion of the story that we got, which is essentially a big rage bait and switch. That's, I think, the big problem with this game is that people should be criticizing this game on its merits. The fact that the gameplay, while fun, becomes repetitive very quickly. The fact that Metropolis, while big, doesn't have quite the same depth as any Arkham game did of world building. You know, those kinds of things should be criticized. The always online play, the fact that they don't fix the damn game, the fact that players have been blamed over and over for its, you know, failures. You know, the amount of Rocksteady devs or ex-Rocksteady devs, which like, look, I respect that you work in the industry. I respect your talent. But the amount of them that I've seen running their mouths on Twitter, like going around defending the game, like going after YouTubers, like finding people and just bitching about their opinion on the game and being like, you're wrong about this. Here's what really happened. Fuck you, basically. It's like, it's such an unprofessional brain dead look. It looks so bad. It's not actually clarifying anything around the game. It's just making you look like an asshat. So like the amount of people I've seen behind the scenes defending this game who worked on it instead of just taking some criticism or instead of just setting the truth straight, you know, like just saying like, hey, just want to let you know this is misinformation. This is actually what happened with the development of this game. That's it. You know, like instead of just doing that, it'll be stuff like, you know, you can take your misinformation and shove it up your ass type stuff. And it's like, that is not how you salvage your game. You know, like that, that's just not how you do it. Now, I don't think that you should have to take abuse. Anybody going after Rocksteady developers and like sending threats of like anything at all uh, is an absolute brain dead loser. You are a moron if you do that. What you're doing is you're essentially wishing harm upon others. You're, te you're scaring people. You're telling them like, hey, I'm going to do this to you. Hey, I hope this happens to you. Stuff like that ridiculous, stupid, not worth it over a video game, and just, it's its just dumb. It, I mean, there's no other way to describe it. People like that, I wish they were not, unfortunately, taking up the same oxygen a lot of us are because they're just mean-spirited assholes. That said, I don't think it's a good look the way developers have treated this game. 
the way developers have taken no criticism on it, the way that they've lashed out back to players, whether they are still at the company of Rocksteady or not there anymore. And the only reason I'm not putting people's tweets here on blast, I'm hesitant to do that because I don't want to do add to dogpiling, like add to harassment. I would hope my audience would be smart enough not to do that, but I worry about it sometimes. Sometimes we will take a look at those specific things, sometimes we won't. But you can look it up. There's a lot of people doing this, a lot of people defending it who worked on the game. And these things are all bad looks. People did not want this game, people did not want this type of game. Even people like me who can make a video talking about five things I like, I'm unimpressed. I don't really enjoy the game very much. Even if it's all fake, you know, it's all a huge big bait and switch, it's all fake out, this isn't the real Justice League, yada yada, the gameplay loop is still repetitive, it still doesn't have a lot of variety to offer, I can't play it for more than an hour or two at a time without getting bored. That first hour, fun. Uh, you know, you're moving around kind of like an insomniac game, kind of like Sunset Overdrive or Spider-Man kind of bouncing around the world, that kind of stuff is fun, but it very quickly loses its luster again and again. And I think it's telling even to look at something like Reddit, as much as the brain rot surrounds that website, and look at something like the Batman Arkham subreddit. They have been able to keep people interested in those games for years. It, it By size, it is the in the top 1% of Reddit communities, 417,000 members. At the time I'm taking a look at it, over 800 people online. But you take a look at something like Suicide Squad, a huge new game, or it should be, there's only 25,000 people total in the Reddit, about 26, with only about 330 people online. You know, like, the, it's just, even people on Reddit aren't as interested in this game as you would think they would be. But games like Helldivers 2, Pal World, all these things, just on PC alone, hundreds of thousands of players, and they're not free, you have to pay for those games. You have to pay for them too. So some people are gonna say, why do I keep talking about this? Well, one, you guys want me to talk about this. Like, I, I know you do because of the numbers. Like, when I talk about this game, the videos do better. You're interested in this universe. You're interested in these stories. And I am too. I want this game to be good. I wanted this game to be good at launch. And hell, I would love it if in three months the game was amazing. But I was talking to a friend about this and we shouldn't have to keep waiting for that. It shouldn't be a thing of like the game launched okay or bad, but it might get better. The game should start good. It really should. You know, when games like Elden Ring are coming out, totally different type of game, but a complete game with tons of content, tons of love put into the world, you know, no microtransactions, all that stuff, and they're selling millions of copies, and then we get this, I just don't understand, and I don't really get why people are defending it. You can enjoy things from it. You can point out things you like. I don't think that's being a shill. It's okay to do. I do it. And I think that there, you know, is a place for more casual games that you can just kind of sit back, enjoy for a little bit and move on. But the way a lot of this is done, the, the writing I think is mean-spirited. They have not paid attention at all to what the community thinks about it. They just don't care. Everybody's running around on Twitter like their life depends on it. Like uh, Joker's got like a, a like a explosive device strapped to their family if they don't defend the game and get mad at people who didn't enjoy it. I just don't understand. It's like... This is the most projecting thing I've probably ever seen for a video game, like in terms of developers being defensive, in terms of players being defensive. But it's also something that's so mean-spirited where people are like attacking Kevin Conroy's legacy and his mental health. People are attacking anyone who points that out. Like the fact that I just said, hey guys, let's criticize the game, but not, not go after this guy who is a hero to a lot of us. It's like, this is a controversial take. Fuck you, Jay. It's like, no, dude, fuck you. Like, seriously, it makes no sense. You can criticize the game and shit all over it, but you don't have to go after the heart of, like, someone like that who saw more of the story than we did and apparently was fine with what he saw and just wanted to play an evil Batman. Cool. That's fine. I wish this wasn't basically his last video game, but it is what it is. I don't think that's the reason people don't like the game, though, overall. I think, overall, people don't like the repetition. They don't like you know, basically all this stuff around it. They don't like the over-defensiveness, and this just isn't what they wanted. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. The game failed. You know, you can do the post-launch content. I guess my concern now is like, is this going to be decanonized, which I would be totally fine with? Are you going to finish that post-launch content and kind of make it the Suicide Squad saves the Justice League? Uh, are you going to cut off after season one because WB is so money-grubbing they won't even release completed movies anymore? Like that Acme movie? with the Looney Tunes that they're just trying to scrap. 
I, I don't know. Uh, this company has become more and more greedy over time. I think a lot of people, myself included, thought maybe the Discovery merger would change that, but it seems like it's just brought it out even more. I'm interested to hear your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content. I would love it if you check out some more of my variety stuff. To be honest with you, I have more fun talking about that than this. I will talk about this. It's important to me, but this is a draining subject. It's frustrating. It sucks. And apparently nobody wants to listen to any of our opinions on it. So I don't know. I guess none of us matter, you know, to double down on the thing, the developers were right, we're just a bunch of idiots, we just don't understand, we're not smart enough to get the game. Let me know what you think down there, if you want to support this channel, Fortnite code DJAY123, there is an actual fun games as a service game that you could just play for free over and over and not feel like you got took for a ride for. Also, of course, we do have our store, CosmoBunny.shop, I talk about that all the time, but we make custom comic book resin, keychains, coasters, trays, all kinds of stuff. And what we do is we take comic books and manga that are destroyed, that are not sellable. We use some of the pages, we recycle them, we make a thing out of them for your home, and then we recycle the rest of the paper. So that's actually fun. We enjoy doing that. And also we do have all kinds of other ways to support the channel down there as well. Have a fantastic day. As always, everyone, stay shway.